All right, so today we're gonna go over a game of Shinjin Sos. And now I did not pick this game because it is the best professional game that has been played in the last couple of weeks. Um, it is one that caught my attention. The it's one that I found one of the most entertaining, I have to say. Uh, there's some things to learn in it, and it's also a game of... It's a little unexpected. It's a little unexpected. The largest move is a move that we're often looking for in our games. And sometimes those large moves seem a little bit small, but sometimes those very, very small moves, or those seemingly very, very small moves, have actual large impacts on the board. Uh, and I thought that was a great example of this game. So I hope you enjoy this game. Uh, Shinzen So, if you forget, is one of the rising Korean stars. He's probably going to be nine don one day. Uh, disappointed he's not there yet, but I have every confidence he's going to make it. Uh, Black, on the other hand, I'm not sure who Black is, actually. I probably should research that a little bit more before doing that. This took place uh, just this month in the Lemon Cup World Top Star Round 2 Tournament. Oh, XHU98 has joined the chat. Hello there, Shu. So the game begins with Black taking a 4-4 four, four stone. There you go, now you have sound on KGS, yes, sorry. Uh, most people watch on uh, uh, Twitch, but that's okay. So the game begins with a 4-4 four, four point, as we see here. Diagonal, or not sorry, not diagonal, but um, the upper left is taken offering the diagonal Fuseki. If Black feels so inclined, he can go ahead and take him up on the offer. Black says no, I'm going to take a normal 3-4 point that will perhaps allow me to play uh, China variation or Kobayashi variation or an older orthodox, uh, depending on what he wants to do. Black takes, or white takes 4-4. Four, four. Offering all the choices to black. You can do whatever you want. Black says what I want to do is go into this variation, which I'm a, I, I like this more than the Kobayashi, to be honest. The Kobayashi feels like it's a little bit too um, streamlined. Like, you're probably going to approach here. They're probably going to approach here. We're going to get into an argument over which Jiseki that we're going to pick here or... Maybe we'll take territory, and then the question is, well, are you going to back off low, and if so, I'm going to do this, and if you're going to back off high, then maybe I'll do this. Hello. Uh, anyway, in the actual game, we are here. And now White has to decide what he wants to do. He has many, many choices at his disposal. He could say, You did not respond to me. I will pincer you and now you will die. And go after something like F3 while taking away the expansion of uh, the enclosure that we see in the lower right-hand side. That's completely possible. Oh, what else can we see? We can see the approach over to here for super, super aggressive. We can see the attachment to the enclosure to try to get as much as possible. Um, <laughs> we probably would not, and I'm going to label this as an X. No, actually, I'm going to label this as a frowny face. Yes, we probably wouldn't see this. Because this is just kind of inviting Black to get everything he really wants. If we were to see Mr. Frowny Face, then Black would take B, White would get a base or threaten to go to the corner or something, and then Black would just keep developing and most likely get a double wing off of uh, this enclosure. So Mr. Frowny Face is not where we want to play right now. We kind of want to try to begin uh, breaking up Black's formation. So to that end, white picks B for himself. Though if those of you who are feeling particularly aggressive want to do A or C, those are completely fine too, I would imagine. Go ahead and knock yourself out. So white backs off, could have played here, and then tried to go for something like this. Trouble is now, these are very, very low stones. So it, no, don't do that, dumb dumb. There we go. Trouble is, these are very, very low stones, so if we were trying to imagine how we're going to reduce black, well, I can think of two shoulder hits right off the top of my head. 
Um, I can think of caps right off the top of my head. So that's four different ways that we can reduce right now. Um, the stone's not dead yet. There's still this. Uh, there's still the attach, obviously, as well. So it seems like there's like a lot of ways to reduce a low position. Not saying it's impossible to play, but it is leaving a lot behind. Maybe he decided he didn't really want to play that kind of game as a result. So white goes into the corner, completely optional. Can also back off. By going into the corner, what you're saying is, I do not mind if you pincer me at A. Because keep in mind, those of you, and I'm speaking to you, mostly double digit cues at this point, uh, if you play S16, you can't play S16 with the thought that this is a move that's absolutely going to be sente for me, because it's not going to be. Like, right now, you have sente. Like, this move can do whatever it wants to do right now. But its next move will not be, right? This move, totally not sente. This move, totally not sente. So if you think you're going to play one of these moves thinking, I still have sente, you're going to be wrong. So bear that in mind. So black's like, ah, uh, or white's like, I'm going to go to the corner. To now white's uh, court, or black's court, sorry, what are you going to do? Black says, I'm going to approach. When, we, when would we respond to, oh, at J17? Um, when you want the corner. Maybe there's like a bunch of like stones over here already and like I don't know some like fighting took place and this isn't really interesting anymore and like this has been filled up and you know the board has just got more stones on it for whatever reason. So the corner becomes a little bit large you don't really want your opponent going in there because like where are you going to expand to like really nowhere to go. So it would make sense to take the 3-3 at this point to keep it from your opponent. All right, so we've got the approach. I heard S17 is to test. It is to test. We're trying to figure out if we're going to get pincered or if we're going to back off. Because if we back off, then we can keep growing here, right? But if our opponent's going to make something like this, is going to invest in the top side, we probably don't want to invite this variation that says we're interested in influence because it's like, well, hello, I'm actually right in front of you. Why did you build this wall here? So maybe you'll be less inclined to pick that variation. Maybe instead you'll go back and be like, you know what, maybe I am going to pick this. And we're going to go for a solidly territorial game. My opponent maybe backs off here, I'll maybe change directions. And at this point, it looks like I'm going to be looking, uh, staring down the barrel of three corners while my opponent's trying to do some weird thing in the middle. I don't know what yet, but I guess something. My opponent backs off on the other hand, well, I guess that's the green light to start building. So, buildy, 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 buildy. I'm guessing. Is this this Jaseki they chose? No, he didn't Atari. Jerk. Wow. B built the wall because he's actually Donald Trump. Not going there. Not going there. Okay, now here's an interesting move. This is actually quite interesting. Black did not Atari. And white's next move is to take the large point. Imagine how much larger this point would be if we actually did the ladder variation. Because now this one move, this one move, oh my god, this one move. This one move is frigging amazing now on this board, right? Isn't it? 
how many different things this move is doing. Like, it's, it, it's breaking the expand off of the cornerstone. It's pincering the F3 stone. And now it's interrupting the ladder from the upper right. That that right there is an amazing stone. He's he's like the all-star of this game right now. Like usually we try to usually our moves do one thing. If we're really, really lucky and like maybe bordering or in Don level, sometimes our moves will do two things. Rarely do they do three or more. All right, so he chose to do this. So now, I mean, this, this move, it's still happy. It's still happy, right? I mean, we're still, I mean, we're, we're still doing two things. So it's kind of cool. It's not doing three, but it's not doing three things, but it's doing two. So that's, that's cool. So Black has to decide what he wants to do now. Black gets in the free move. A lot of players are playing that really, really early on in the game now. Which is a, which is a small thing, but it's interesting to note. Because usually I kind of was more inclined to leave that for co-threats and things. But nowadays it's kind of just being played almost immediately. Which is... A thing, I guess. Because if we ignore it, right, then we're threatening like something like this. And now the question is, are we still alive here? The answer is no. All right, so we play here. We don't respond to that. If we respond to that, when white's already alive, then we feel stupid. Instead, Black says, I'm going to take the attack onto you. Horla has a question. What's your question, Horla? If that's actually how you pronounce your name. It could be Orla, actually, now that I think about it, and not Horla. Hmm. What can White do if Q18 not played? Well, if Q18's not played, I mean, you've got... You've got this, which I guess is technically gonna probably be Sente. Save a larger corner for white. Uh, I think that's about it, though. You, you, I don't know, you got a large follow-up, right? Got it, though. You can't try anything too bizarre here, right? Because... The threat of you dying horrifyingly in the corner is not going to make you happy. So, I don't know. And if there's some weird Aji that lingers there because you can't play that, I don't see it. Okay, made that exchange. And now, we're getting into a fight here. Three against Mr. Four over there. So to get into a fight, we're going to follow up with a bunch of not things that we're going to do. Yeah, I have seen Mr. Double Digit Q's looking at you again when I say this, I have seen a lot of weird ideas here. Like, attachments here and on the other side to try to get a base. I've seen attachments on top to try to, like, I don't know, do something else. But all of these things make white, uh, black a lot stronger. These are things that we, these are the ones that we want to avoid. Because the only thing they're going to do is just uh, serve to um make black stronger. Instead, we're going to kick it turns him into this shape. If we give him, let's say, this shape, 
Well, this is... This is freaking alive. So, fight over. Right? Fight done. Same thing on the other side. If we do this... We're kind of making someone stronger. And then we need to go back and defend. And then... I mean, it kind of seems like we're in trouble again. Ew. Top side is kind of big. <laughs> Top side is kind of big, but if we take that for ourselves, we can anticipate white taking something like this as well. And I guess he doesn't want that to happen. He wants to start uh, fighting because we're... By playing this move here at M4, keep in mind, we're also expanding the right. Because this is the sector line now, right? This is our new sector line for the right-hand side. Okay. So you go ahead and do this. Put maximum pressure on the two stones. Black fearlessly says, I do not care about you trying to cut me. I'll think about the shoulder hits. What shoulder hits where? What are we doing? Oh, here? Um, G4. Uh, for white? This? Hmm. This is specifically if you want... Oops, that's stupid. There we go. If you specifically want outside influence and you are saying that your opponent will just live here. So, I think we would need a little bit more to say, you know what? Be alive. I just want the middle anyway. I don't think we... I don't, I don't really see enough in the middle to warrant that kind of a variation. Um, yeah. Alright, so we got this. White makes shape. Black defends, because sadly our opponent didn't try to poke through us. Now we're looking for more shapes. And ways to get bases. And shapes and bases, and bases and shapes. And then Black does something insane. He makes a trade into the corner that I would usually tell all my students not to do. It's like, no, that's not the way that goes, Philly. You're not supposed to do that. That's bad for you. You're killing your stones on the outside. But it's also a bit of a dare. It's like, white has to now try to profit off of attacking those stones. You do get corner in Sente, but you also have no shape in Sente. Stones are not dead, but they are very, very weak right now. So what do you think we ought to do as black in this situation? Maybe Tanuki. <laughs> How does black punish if white cuts G6 before black defends? Um, you, oh, you climb on top of him, go for a ride. But that, oh god, that, that was not the sentence I meant to say. I'm going to have to defend that one immediately. Um, if he tries to cut through us, right, if he tries to do this, there's a couple of things you can do. 
the brain dead one is just be like, uh, you can't actually do that. Because you can, you know, take him for a little ride of sente moves and then kill him, right? But there are other things you could do. You could, for example, say, Okay, you can do all that if you like to. I'm just gonna get influence because holy crap, I'm now across the entire board. So it's really dangerous to try to invest yourself in those two stones. Because the amount of Aji that exists, you could get a wraparound, right? So you have to be very, very careful. Very, very careful. Which is why after the defense, we kill that variation off. But yeah, the small knight there, the small knight there, and I'm going to ruin the board for a minute. Uh, things like the small knight there and um, the small knight here are great ways to trap a greedy player. Like, okay, I don't... Okay, look, I'm not in favor of using trick moves to get in a, a cheap win, but if you've got that really greedy little player at, like, your go club or something, and they, they, they always, like, fight everything you do, and it frustrates you to no end, this is the kind of thing that can really screw them up. Because, yeah, they'll fight everything, right? But if you're set up for it, they're fighting this is small. And you can kind of grow while they're busy laughingly killing a small point here and there. Anywho. Anywho. So we have this. We have to do something with it. But there are two things that we want to do. One, we would ideally like to not completely get rid of our stones. That is important. And two, we want to make sure that we didn't just give white the entire middle of the board. F7. So not quite correct. Tengen, 10 points from Kimia. You have now lost the House Cup. We find a move that reduces the influence that White has, which is typically a low stone. And if we get stronger in the center, we buy... You called D13? You did call D13. Why'd you say it's C11 then? You're right, you did say it. You did say it, you did say it. Yeah, all right, good one then. Good one. Yeah, the shoulder hit. It does what we want to beautifully. Now your opponent, now you might say, but what if your opponent tries to come out? than you do as well, because this is working perfectly with each other. Right? This is another one of those, like, super amazing moves that is just, like, threatening to connect up here, which is nice. It's threatening to grow this, which is nice. And it's got, uh, preparations for here too, right? <clears throat> Can you go over C11? Um, C11 is just an invasion. They can't live locally, right? I imagine this will either get... This might just get capped. And then White gets a wall. I mean, even if we play here, all we can do is jump out. Probably the cap, though, maybe. Or maybe even ignored. That could actually be worse, now I think about it. It might actually just flat out get ignored. 
and then white might start reducing the top. Because it doesn't really threaten very much, does it? Because the group on the left for white is completely fine, so yeah, we could just find white just saying, I don't care about what you're doing right now. But if you want your opponent caring about what you're doing right now, hitting his stones definitely get his attention. Pro tip, if you want someone to notice you, walk up to them and punch them. They'll notice you. Promise. Promise. You will have their undivided attention. So we go here. White tries to come further in. We have that we have that rule about punching in the army. That's kind of frightening actually. Kicking them in the knees. Is that how you court attractive women bats? My lawyers told me not to answer that question without their presence. I'm sorry, Faya. So, White's trying to separate because the amazingness of this move must be fought. So White tries to come in, and Black's like, new. No. Trying to, yes. He's trying to maintain an attack. Which is why Black starts trying to make his moves work together. So he goes here. White backs off. Tari. See, we're trying to make all this work together and destroy the center for White. Because he's obviously interested in... Uh, attacking us on a whole scale and building it up. Offering a trade, I will allow you to Atari left and connect and take some area there if I can Atari you right and connect and take, what line is this? Four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth line on the right. White says no joy. I'm taking ninth line on the right. You're not taking ninth line on the right. I am. And thus, Mr. Shinjin So is saying, You are locked in here with me. Okay. This is now getting kinda kinda scary. Making shape. Same. Threatening to surround the weak group. Lives. Again, threatening to surround the high head of two stones is really, really big. Basic proverbs. We can Hane because this group is fairly strong. It's got the uh, stone already dead over there. It's got easy shape points around like K2, so it's not going to die anytime soon. We can grin and bear the cut. Slowly getting that center for ourselves. Can't get rid of the stone. Still trying to grow that right hand side because it's so freaking huge. Now we're trading again. It's like, you can cut me off. Like, he's still interested in trading off that group. Like, I will give you that if you give me the top. So right now, they're kind of businessmen. Negotiating a deal. White's renegotiating the terms of the deal. You can see that right now that we're kind of uh, threatening a, a ladder here. I 
And now this is where things get really interesting. Because there's no ladder right now, right? And white clearly wants access to the top of the board. While, white's, while black's trying to develop. And we get into a frigging huge move. White declares bankruptcy move 200. No, no, man. He's just going to be too big to fail. Don't worry about it. So, huge co on our hands. Luckily, we've got some threats. That's an Atari, if you've ever seen one. Going back to co. Threatening gets ignored, kills it off, and now this is where the seemingly small moves come into play, because black just took that right hand side, right? While, black, while white's getting the top. So the question is, where's the profit here? Because white's not going to kill the entire middle. I mean, that's just insane, right? I mean, these black stones just killed off those white stones in the center of the freaking board. That can't happen. So where's the balance of profit from the fact that white just, that black just, you know, got so much on the right-hand side? So the Atari's in order to begin profiting. Okay. And white says, or black says, I'm going to extend and further my profit. Where is your profit from this? Just those two stones on top of the board? Doesn't even make any sense. Locks the left hand side off. Now we're seeing some profit here. Okay. Nice and sente, otherwise the entire bottom dies. And now the next large move looks so frigging small. Looks so frigging small. 816 seemed so tiny to me. Well, it was kind of large, but also kind of small at the same time, because like the right was growing, and I'm looking at this game, I'm like scared that it's going to get too big. Where's the next large move? Where is white declaring the next large move lies? Where is that little thing? Where is it? Where are you? M12? Nope. We're getting close. G13, double Atari, two stones. So Black's like, I'm just going to live here, I guess. I mean, you don't seem to care. So I've connected that up as well. So this upper left-hand corner, that doesn't look professional. <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't. White extends. Jumps up. Threatening to kill off the five stones in the middle of the board. White resists. Threatens to go through and kill off the three stones. G13, the cutest Q move that ever queued. Exactly. Tightens the shape. Threatening to go under. And poke in, rather. Takes the stone to defend his, uh... Defend his investment. 
tries to come in. Tari takes another stone. The upper left looks like 25 Qs are playing this game. It looks like the game began off with, I don't know, maybe some down level players and then 25 Qs took over the upper left and just madness broke out. Phils, trying to give a Liberty shortage here. It's like he's completely bent on living here. I mean, does he really have to? If he had played this, is it really that bad? Like seriously, I... Black is insane, isn't he? What does Guestimator say right now? If we play this, if we play this, what's the score? Um, pretty close. Guestimator is incorrectly killing the bottom left and upper right, so that evens out black plus 20. Looks like it's fairly even. But black is going in for all, an all life. Right? Everything's gonna live for black. And white just says, I dare you. Strengthening his shape. Looking like he's found something to go after. <sighs> Looking like he's found something to go after. Oh my god, I think he's out. I think he's out. I think he did it. I think he's gonna connect and escape. But White says no, you must not be allowed to escape. We Atari. We threaten to go through. Now there's too many liberties. Black is in fact dead on the inside and has to resign. After all of those moves, after all of those moves in the middle, he just had to try to live in there, didn't he? Like after all of this, like trying to secure the top, uh, the center for ourselves with that and try to get rid of the Aji here and making sure that you know that's gonna be a thing we just had to frigging live I mean that's Sente right there right I don't know. Weird game. Weird game. Definitely the most entertaining game that I've seen. I'm <laughs> sure that's a professional game. This is a professional game, yes. Shin Jin So, Rising Korean Star versus a, um, I guess a, what was it, a new star? I forget how that worded that. Um... World Top Star Round 2. The Lemon. World, Lemon Cup World Star. Sorry, World Top Star Round 2. Uh, interesting thing to note, though, is Shinjin So, after this game, went on to beat the person that uh, Keji lost to in the previous round. So he's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good. Uh, is it traditions uh, sales people? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe.
But yeah, I thought this game was entertaining. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, looking at it too. And maybe if you're lucky, you learned a thing or two in the process. I'll of course be back Sunday for a real board uh, lecture where we go over one of Master's games. I do not know which one yet. I need to pick. There are a lot. There are like 50 of them now or so. I'm probably just going to pick one at random. Again, same thing. Not based on player, but whichever one I thought is most entertaining. Uh, NeoCTZ, thank you for following. What time is it? Uh, 3 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. So I will see you, those who make it to that, and if you don't, it's completely fine. I'm going to be uploading it onto my channel anyway, so that works as well. In the meantime, good night, everyone.